This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, we welcome Tay Allen to the show. <laughs> She's so excited. She's not even saying anything during the part where nobody gets to see her. It's a kicker. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 269. Nice. Do I do stuff now? For Thursday, the 7th of January, 2021. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Kent. That's Amos. That's our guest, Tay Allen. Welcome. It's Tay! Can they see me yet? (laughs) Everyone should be able to see you. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Just, just in general, they should be able to see you, let alone on this show. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, everybody come over. We're doing a slumber party tonight. A moving watch day party. <laughs> <laughs> the party. Welcome, everyone. Um, Amos is having some tech issues tonight. Go figure. How's that going for you, buddy? Well, uh, I was. I had about 45 minutes before the show, so I figured I'd jump into Factorio a little bit and update my factory. Uh And then at about uh, 25 after the hour, I was like, time to reboot. And I rebooted, and two monitors just never came back. They work fine until I log in, and then nothing. And, of course, now I'm also having network issues. So I, I, you know, (sighs) fuck Trump and Russia. Wow. A a catastrophe. (laughs) Uh, Tay, welcome back to the show. It's been a minute since you've been on. How has life been for you? It's good. For those who weren't here for a pre-show, I want to note that there are two Tays on this. Oh, gosh, messed it up again. This is also me. The computer did this booby shot, not me. And uh, I just wanted everyone to know that, but I decided to keep it. So I also wanted everyone to know that too. So we have, um, we, so we have Tay and we have Tite. Yes. So there's three, like that weird um, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Total Mars. What? Help me out. What's that really total, creepy thing? Total Recall. Woman... Yes, Total Recall. Oh, okay. We must talk about something different. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. But that is tonight. And uh, we. We've been trying to make this show work for 30 minutes so far, so I'm just, like, primed and ready to go. I've said some weird things, and I was singing old lady music. I can repeat that if that's what the fans want. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's amazing. Um, Yeah, so what a week. It's been a crazy week. Um, Oh, my gosh. Can we just have, like, a universal love moment just to honor that before we start being so silly? Yes. Okay, beautiful. (laughs) Yes, yes. Uh, so last week we had the New Year's Eve streamathon, and it was a resounding success. We blew way past our goal. Uh, yeah. It was fantastic. Uh, our goal of... was two thousand seventy-six dollars. Yep. We brought in five thousand uh, six thousand five hundred no six thousand four hundred fifty-six dollars and fifty-seven cents. Yeah, some yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, we we basically tripled our our goal, and it was yeah. it was amazing. There were so many amazing streamers, so many great shows, and Diamond Club. You guys really brought it with the donations. Um, all mm. the donations went to Extra Life, helping the Children's Miracle Network. It was freaking mm. awesome. And only two tech difficulties this time. <gasps> yeah, yeah. Is I mean, that every why you guys have never really pushed hard to have me be part of it because you don't want me to break the stream. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it, competition's getting fierce for for uh, streaming exactly. slots. So, oh, I bet. yeah, yes. it's going to be it's going to be a fun time going going forward to see people fighting over the time slots. Um, yeah. But no, it's it's a blast. Uh, the more people that we get involved, the uh, the better it is every, every year. It's getting more and more uh, traction. So. Um, thank you, everyone that, that showed up for that 27-hour um, stream. Thanks for hanging out, um, everybody. Um, I slept for 14 hours straight after the streamathon because I, I I probably slept for three hours in the in the 48 hours previous to that. So, yeah, I uh, I really got my sleep in. Uh, Amos, what about you? Did you did you crash hard on the first? Uh- 
I haven't had a chance to. It's been so busy around here. And the twins flew home yet, or flew back to Tacoma yesterday, and Amber mm-hmm. flew out to go to South Carolina on Monday. So it's just kind of been nonstop the whole time. Like I haven't. I, I went to bed at nine o'clock last night. And my body woke up at four thirty and was like, "Hey, you got stuff to do." And I was like, "Screw you!" And it said, "No, <laughs> no, get the hell out of this bed right now." Yeah. Yeah. So, how is my sleep just kind of everywhere? Yeah. So hey. what do you have to do, Amos? What exciting, enthralling things do you do with your day? Edit podcasts, <laughs> check the news, and play Factorio. Oh, man. Just a thrill ride yeah. your life is. Um, hey, t- hey, hey, hey. That, that tree is not going to grow itself, all right? <laughs> Tay, how was your New Year's? My New Year's? Okay, you know my memory. Okay, it was really good. So uh, <laughs> I saw some some fireworks because I was at a house in like a neighborhood and I was mm-hmm. like oh yes this is a thing people used to do this is great <laughs> and I played Dominion for four hours and I won three out of four games so I thought y'all would be proud of that wow the last game had like tons of curses and I just didn't utilize the witch correctly for every any super nerds out there it was just like not my cup of tea and uh <laughs> but the other three I whooped them <laughs> nice well well done um, Thank you. I've actually been really getting into tabletop games. We've bought, in the last year, oh, I'm not even going to get them all, Citadels, The Grim Forest, I have Netrunner, um, we bought the Harry Potter Hogwarts battle, and that's exciting, all four villainesses, Call to Adventure, what other nerdy things can I name drop so you guys believe that I'm a nerd? Hold on, let me put my glasses on. <laughs> I, I, have, I have to make a point of clarification real quick before this goes completely haywire and I screw things up again. <laughs> okay. This is a question I should always ask every time we have Tay on. Tay, what's happened in your love life? Oh, well, for those visual watchers, I have an oh. engagement ring on my finger. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Congratulations. That's amazing. Hey, this is different from the old Tay who has that sassy hand up with no ring. So that's another reason we'll say I kept that picture up. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm engaged and it's really exciting and a little scary and mm-hmm. definitely brought up lots of my childhood intense triggers around love that I hadn't fully worked through yet. Um, but he's patient and kind. So that's wonderful. <laughs> As he must be, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. He did not watch any Tay Allen video until we dated for a year. And it wasn't purposeful. <laughs> oh, wait. I actually have a story. I have an RMP story. Okay. Y'all broke us up. This show almost broke us up because he, like, uh, but be proud of it. So I think it was like four or so months into our relationship. And he was living with other people, and they're, like, not our sense of humor. Not. Like, they're way straight-laced. And they kind of, like, they did more digging than Riley did. Riley's my fiancé. So they found Tay Allen and everything. And they friended me on Facebook. And I posted, like I did tonight, like, I'm going to be on this show. Mm-hmm. So they started watching. And Riley came home. <laughs> and it was the moment when I was in the bathtub. With the- oh, no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> And literally, he only saw that three or four minutes. I think it was like presidential election themed, and I was giving a speech from the <laughs> bathtub about like running for president. And they were like, "Oh my god, how are you dating her? <laughs> She's so weird. What are you doing?" Oh, and they geez. super shamed him. Like it was very divisive. And of course, I was like, um. That's me. I'm super proud of this. No shame. I just had so much fun. Sorry if they can't have fun. Mm. But it was like, it was a big deal, kind of. And it's been like repeated throughout our relationship. And tonight he was like, Is this the one with the bathtub? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You broadcast from a bathtub once, and, and this is your <laughs> reputation forever. It almost kaput. <gasps> oh man was, there was a that is crazy tub and the water was going to get drained or it was going to overflow 
I don't know which is <laughs> but I just thought y'all would love that so much. And oh, for all the gosh. Diamond Club, like everyone made that moment happen where I really freaked out normal people <laughs> and almost lost my relationship. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I'm glad your relationship survived. You now have a ring on your finger. That's fantastic. Yes, um, and I want you yeah. guys to know that if he hadn't have been down for the bathtub tay, it wouldn't have worked out. Like, that was not going to be something that was, like, <laughs> sober. That was a strong, this is me, watch the clip again, yeah. revel in it, <laughs> enjoy your life. <laughs> like, there was no apologizing for my RMP performances that i've done over the year that's fantastic <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. That, that that's how i deal with relationships in my life if you can't handle me at rmp then i don't need you in my life <laughs> I, and I told I'm, I, I like, go ahead i don't know that i'm any different on rmp than i am in real person which which is part of the problem I think. <laughs> <laughs> amos has no friends <laughs> But all I, my friends are either Diamond Club or veterans. That's, that's right, all right, right, right. Those are your two hats. <laughs> either, either, either I've been on stream with you or I've been to war with you. So that's it. That's, yeah. Those are the two groups that I have. So that is really <laughs> funny. I love that. But I told, I mean, this I was like, these guys are my really good friends. I have known these people for years, way longer than I've known you. Right. Like this online family and they were really there for me when i needed it and like they've been on this journey with me and i'm like i, I was just talking about how amazing you guys are and how amazing this <laughs> show is how fun it is and i think like he sees a little more like meditative tay i'm doing these all for you curtis by the way um but <laughs> i was like there is like definitely the side of me that is just gonna like dance so white girl for hours and get in a bathtub like you gotta really enjoy this because i do oh man that is awesome so it was really fun <laughs> that is fantastic it's, uh, Ken, Ken, i don't know that we've ever been a relationship litmus test before yeah this this is probably a first man i'm i'm actually kind of honored i know like like that's that's something special right there. This, I mean, this podcast has almost been a litmus test for my own relationship, but I don't know if that really counts the same way. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So how how to transition out of that? Oh um, my gosh. Um, so Tay, you were talking about uh, nerdy games that you're playing. I think the the nerdiest thing that I've done this week is uh, I've been exploring the uh, HBO Max catalog and uh kind of going down the the dc universe rabbit hole just like sex weird things are about to come out like i've been exploring the hbo <laughs> <laughs> uh, continue. It was well just it's a little more vanilla thing. than that uh no but it, like i so i've been i've been going through the the dc comics um tv shows and and movies and whatnot and and i started watching titans has have either of you seen titans it is so incredible that you brought this up, but incredible, like, what I'm about to say is just kind of normal. <laughs> but um, I looked up movies about the Greek gods two nights ago. Okay, okay. So that's this is the show. tangentially so related. Up? Yeah, so so this isn't about the Greek god titans. This is about uh, the, the DC <laughs> Comics um, superhero team called the Titans. Um, it's oh, on HBO Max. Okay. Well, it's... So for an old it's for an old school that came up. <laughs> for an old school DC Comics nerd like I was a, I was the biggest fan of Batman uh, when I was a kid mm -hmm. and I I read all the like all the DC stuff and um, Titans is not a great show but it's a fun show and and for the for the Batman nerd in me like it it hit all the right mm -hmm. buttons for me so. So if you like DC Comics, especially old school stuff, um, I encourage you to check out Titans on HBO Max. <laughs> I if I check out anything on HBO Max, to be honest, after Wonder Woman, I the only other thing that I see on there that I really want to watch is West Wing. Ah, like okay. I it, it that that show is so high on my list of shit I need to watch. Mm. Um, you haven't seen it. 
I have I have seen a few clips here and there, but I have never actually sat down and watched a single episode of that show. Yeah, I yeah, same. Yeah, I've I've never nine. actually watched it. I loved it. Yeah. Is the show that old? I, oh my gosh. Yeah. I feel yeah, like I was like, in middle school watching it with my parents. It's like ten seasons or something like that. Hmm. And it's been off the air for several years. So yeah. Okay. It's, it's, yeah, I didn't realize oh. it was it was uh, that extensive. Holy cow! Okay, I'm 17, so just count backwards. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, disclaimer: She was over 18 when she was in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant! Oh my gosh! Now, like, super disclaimer: It's okay, everybody. I'm 31. <laughs> <laughs> right. Y- y'all, you know clips get cut <laughs> and moved around. <laughs> no one's going to believe that either way. So, Because <laughs> one, you might have just falsified some information, and now you're trying to get in with more false information, right? Plus 31. <laughs> Who's going to think you're 31? You don't look what? 31. You don't act 31. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a 31-year-old job. I don't have a 31-year-old th- house. Uh, I literally have nothing. I'm in a, like, teenager shirt. <laughs> Here's a manatee stuffed animal. A manatee? A, a manatee? Thank you, Ken. That yeah. made my heart so <laughs> So, I, uh, my big geek thing of the week, other than watching all the political stuff, because, well, you know me. Right, right, of uh, course. And and Kent, I was told not to gloat this, but uh, as far as the events yesterday, you can't say I didn't tell you something like that was going to happen four years ago. Oh no, I had no doubt that something like like that was going to happen. But your um, uh, uh, wild theories were not even close to that. But I, but anyway, we're not gonna. Off. But anyway, we're not gonna. I, I, we're I not gonna talk politics on here. But. This show is a break from <laughs> politics, and if you appreciate getting a break from politics, consider joining our Patreon over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. You get pre-shows and post-shows, wow. exclusive interviews, um, all kinds of stuff. Plus, you get the, the smug satisfaction, to steal Brian Brushwood's words, you get the smug satisfaction of, of knowing that you are helping to fuel this show um, uh, but yeah, uh, give us a buck over at patreon.com slash ritual misery. Um, so what'd you guys get for Christmas? I got a 15 pound piece of Labradite stone. Okay. <laughs> and and what, what do you do with that? Do you display that on your mantle? <laughs> it's beautiful. I feel like it has a very charged, energetic, gorgeous energy um, I put it in the moonlight under the conjunction and let it soak in the rays and I'm going to use it in spells. <laughs> okay. Sounds legit. <laughs> you, said, you said 15 pounds. Yes. I'm wondering if it's close to me. Do you want me to try? I mean, it may take time to try to find it. So I could try to hold it up and that's, show you the big rock. That's fine. Like how big is it though? Is it like shoebox size? It's like my head. <laughs> okay. I mean, wow. you know, you're seeing my head over a computer screen, so <laughs> get creative there. I also <laughs> want to say thank you so much, Green Gun Guy, for refusing to believe I'm over 15. I am also going to refuse <laughs> to believe that I'm over 15. So we're partners in it. <laughs> Man. Um, yeah, so before I was 15, there was a show that yeah. I used to watch um, that, that actually, uh, hang on, let me, let me go ahead and play this stinger real quick. What time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. On the Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> all right, so I have a game for you guys. And I I call it He-Man or Come On, Man. So I'm going to go through a list of 10 He-Man and the Masters of the Universe characters. Some of them are real, like actual characters that are from that franchise. And some of them... E-Man? Yes, and some of them are, are names that I made up. And you guys have to tell me if they're real or fake. 
am I supposed to know what He-Man is, or is that also fake? <laughs> <laughs> so Amos, Amos right now is showing you a pop figure of He-Man. Oh, so, oh okay. Um, He-Man he and the Masters of the Universe is famous for having very silly-sounding character names. Uh, mm. So so it's pretty much, even if you've watched the show or, or had some of the toys as a kid, uh, there's probably silly sounding names that you didn't even know existed. So, okay, I don't want to disappoint the guys who are listening. So, retract what I said. <laughs> he man, ready to go. Put the glasses on. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So the way that the way that we're gonna play this game is, Tay, I'm gonna ask you you first, and then I'm gonna ask Amos the same thing before I give before I give the answer. So both of you have a shot at it, and then we'll we'll kind of go back and forth like that. Okay. Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right. Can I say something super quick? Sure. Well, of course. Um, his back to us, Amos. Do you want three Harry Potter pop figurines, Ron barfing slugs, Albus holding a baby, and Hermione doing Guardian Leviosa? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Send me your address. Oh, what's she gonna do with it? You don't know after the show. <laughs> oh my gosh that's a dangerous proposition yes uh, sorry go ahead Kent I just didn't want to forget right on okay so Tay we're going to start with you you tell me if this is a real He-Man character or fake Fisto 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 real you are going to say real Amos is Fisto a real character or not uh yes you're gonna say yes so you both say yes and yeah. you are both correct fisto is real i didn't even need the 15 pound labradite <laughs> all right amos you get to answer first on this one okay butt face no you're saying butt face is fake all right yes tay what about you what do you think butt face i'm also saying fake. You're both going to say fake. Amos said it first. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and yet again, you guys are both correct. Butt face, I made up. <laughs> Why are you going to have fist though and face? then butt face? <laughs> what are well, you trying to say, Kent? Well, next up, we've got Hansy. Tay, is Hansy a real Masters of the Universe uh, character? I love that word. That's, that's like one of my favorite words. Um, so I'll go yes. You're going to say yes? Uh, Amos, is Hansy a real character? That doesn't sound right. As in, it sounds like it should be a Masters of the Universe character, which means it probably isn't because it just sounds too correct for it. I think this is one that you made up. Okay, so you are going to say fake? All right, Amos, you, yeah. you are correct. I did make it up. That is very clever. I want to give you an accolade point. <laughs> All right. A point for me. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. We're starting with Amos this time. Sir Laserlot. No. Okay. Tay? That's is... probably, that's actually probably one, but that, yes. no, that sounds dumb. So you, Amos, you say fake. Tay, you say real? Yes. And yeah, that, this time, Tay is correct. Sir oh, Laserlot is real. Tied, and I haven't even watched it. I'm just <laughs> using my intuition powers and feeling my energy. <laughs> All right, uh, Tay, is Snout Spout real? Oh, I love that name, too. Snout Spout. I'm going to go no. You're going to say be a pig that shoots stuff that out of his nose? Um, well, you tell me, is it real or fake? Snout spout. Snout spout. Say so you said real? I said not real. Not real. Snout spout. It's very important that you win this game, Amos. Your life depends on it. <laughs> That's what you missed in the pre-show when your computer wasn't working. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, while my computer still isn't working. Um, I'm going to go, uh, that would be real. That sounds like something that, that, that sounds like just the stupid names that they had on that show. Okay. 
snout spout is in fact real. Thing is, that's awesome. It's like I'm upset when I miss it, but I'm glad it's real. Yeah. So this one, <laughs> if I remember right, Snout Spout is a, a guy, like a guy with an elephant head, and the action figure yes, would like spray, yeah, it would spray um, like water out of his snout. So, all right, Amos. Spray boogers out of his snout. Yeah. Well, depending on depending on what you put in the action figure, I suppose. All right, Amos. Is this one real or fake? Karate crotch. Karate crotch. Karate, no, that sounds like that sounds like a condition you get from practicing too much. <laughs> okay, so you're saying fake? I'm going to say fake. All right. Say what about karate crotch? I'm also going to say fake. All right, you are both correct. I'm, I made up karate crotch. Because I have never seen this show and I know absolutely nothing about it. My basis for this is, does this seem Kent-y? Ah. <laughs> and okay. it's like, would Kent's mind go here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Not a bad strategy. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll try that strategy on this one. Next up, we have Stinkor. Stinkor. Can you please spell it? S-T-I-N-K-O-R. Stinkor. My first. I'm going real. You're going to say real. Amos? Stinkor. I will agree. You're going to say real as well. Um, well, good. You both got the point. Stinkor is like a, he's like a giant um, skunk. And Ooh. the action figure I, was actually, it was like a, it was like a, the worst scratch and sniff sticker. Like it was, it smelled <laughs> awful. <laughs> wow. Gosh, remember those markers though? They used to smell amazing. Those like yep. colored, like thick markers. You mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, like strawberry. Oh, I just looked up He-Man. I know this. I'm okay. I'm back in nerddom. I know <laughs> He-Man. Not enough to do well in this game, but. Curtis doesn't have to be like, oh, what? <laughs> um, I, I, I will tell you, speaking of, of all this stuff, I was at the comic book store on Monday after I dropped Amber off, and I was browsing their pops. And they had three of the four uh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, okay. The one, so the one they didn't have was the one that I liked least because he was always the asshole of the group. But I couldn't buy them because I didn't have the four turtle set. Uh, so I went to Walmart and they had two of them, but not the not the same. The same or they didn't have the one that the comic book store didn't have. Uh, I see. So okay. Kent, pop quiz on you: of the four Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which one do you think is my least favorite, and also <laughs> the one they did not have? I'm gonna guess Raphael. He was the asshole they didn't have, yes. Yeah, because you said that he's the one that was an asshole, I was like, well, that's he's talking about Raph. And, and, <laughs> and incidentally, Raph was my favorite Pokemon. Or Pokemon, Jesus, Ninja Turtle. I don't know why I had Pokemon in my brain just now. but uh, I also resonate with the Archangel Raphael. Ah, okay. Well, there we go. <laughs> Me and Kent are aligned once again. <laughs> it's got to be a balancing effect. Right, all right. All right, Amos, uh, this one goes to you first. Is Snot Nose real? No. Okay, Tay? Snot Nose. No. Too similar to the other one. To, to right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Snout Spout was the one that was real, and uh, Amos said something about putting boogers in there or whatever. I was like, uh, in my head, I was like, oh, wait, wait, just a couple uh, a couple <laughs> lines before you uh, before you mentioned that one. Uh, but yeah, I made up Snot Nose. Snot Nose is not real. <laughs> All right, uh, Tay, did I make this one up, or is this one real? Spit Mouth. Okay. Spit Mouth. Oh, gosh, these are hard. Uh. Chat, chat says we need to have a way to gamble bits uh, on the on the questions for Kent's quizzes. <gasps> yeah, there's yeah. Oh, I that's would a love that. that is uh, man. We'll have to look into that. Let's see if there's a way to do that. Um, but yeah, so spit mouth. What are we thinking? Uh, spit mouth. 
I think it's a Kent, but I it could be real. But I just think you had fun making up spit mouth. <laughs> All right, Curtis so you... said, "Is it legal about the gambling?" <gasps> that's yeah. That's that's well. I mean, as long as it's not real money, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Deuce Gone Wild said Twitch just added it, and of course it would be a oh. it's a um, a non real good which is how they can give away prizes and it's a random number of bits or a random number of digital tokens or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So it's, huh. uh, it's, it's not illegal. Uh, I would say spit mouth is too close to spit take, which is what Ken was thinking about when he was thinking about watching a the, uh, theatrical movie later on tonight. Uh, but this character, if he was real, would be, uh, uh, that, I think that's what his superpower would be. Uh, every time the hero came up with a, uh, a one of those one-liners that, that puts bad guys down, he would do a spit take right at the, uh, the hero and distract him with, uh, just, just being awash with saliva. Okay. So, I so... have a movie story about spitting. My computer just came up. Oh, Wow. A little late in the game. Hey, r- real quick before we go, before we go to your story, uh, I just want to clarify, Amos, are you saying real or fake on that one? I uh, I'm saying fake. Okay, you both got that one correct. It is in fact fake. Uh, what was your what's your story, Tay? I'll make it quick because I know we're running so late with the show. Um, so I was in this very weird horror thing that never got full. Actually, it is out there if someone oh, can find it. Okay. Yep challenge and it was the worst filming experience of my life Mm. i was put at night in the freezing cold in this warehouse that was covered in like you know the stuff in your ceiling that you're not supposed to touch like the The pink insulation yeah yeah sure yeah covered in that they put a Ah. piece of like a full pork like a pig that had been roasted on the fire that was covered in fake blood on the ground in that and I had to sit on my hands and knees in this dirt and old rat poop and insulation and eat this bloody oh, no. roasted pig. And they would call like action and I had to eat it. And then, you know, just immediately spit it all out because it's just so disgusting. And that taught me how to set boundaries in the entertainment industry. Wow. That is, that's incredible. It was yeah, horrible. So, um, for the people who are avidly Googling this right now, it may be under Tate Allen, which was that one year I changed my name again. T-A-T-E-A-L-L-Y-N. I have black hair in it. Good luck finding it. Um, I'm uh, sure if anybody can find it, Chat Realm will find it. And uh, yeah. we will post the link if somebody finds it. <laughs> Perfect. Great. We'll watch that together, too. And oh. you know the horrific backstory now. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. All right. So moving into the final one, Amos <laughs> Trap Jaw. Is Trap Jaw real or fake? Trap Jaw is real. Okay. Tay, what do you and think? I, and I'll give you my reason why. Game theory, there's been more fakes than reals, and I think I need to balance it out with the real. Okay. Tay, what do you think? I'm going real because it sounds real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yes, you both got it right. Trap Jaw is, in fact, real. Um, Amos, you got 8 out of 10. Tay, you got 7 out of 10. I demand another question to tie it. <laughs> Which means that you both beat the D, so congratulations. Wow. Well, I am <sighs> flummoxed by losing. It will take a few moments to regain my composure. <laughs> um. You you didn't name any of the ones that are on the back of my my uh, He Man. Oh, uh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad I I tongue tongue I'm rasher, glad too. Cyclone, Mosquito, Web Store, and of course Skeletor. Yeah, that's fantastic. Good. I'm glad about that as well. Ken, I want to just applaud you for always coming up with such fun games. Oh well, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I try to make them as fun as I can. Sometimes are yes. sometimes it's a lot funner than other weeks. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, Is I do it my best. Game or the making of it? Both. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Tay, 
we've been talking about a movie and, and kind of hitting around about a movie. Uh, you were in a movie actually filmed a couple of years ago, but it, it just started uh, really making itself known in public and available for purchase and rent in the last few months. Uh, what movie was that? It is called Call Me Brother. Can anyone guess what it's about from that title? Oh, um, I'm gonna guess. Uh, Kent, you, you, you and I shouldn't. You, you and I shouldn't guess because we've already talked to her about it. So. Oh, oh, oh! I was gonna say. I was gonna say that my my original guess, just hearing that title, would be like if um if if it's time to do ritual misery and Amos isn't available, I will text him. Call me, brother. <laughs> that's that's actually accurate. <laughs> So, We're so, so Tay, let me get this right. You did an entire movie on how I'm always late for the show. Like, <laughs> well, Amos, like that known each other for my years. Heart with love. That Good. Really well, you're about to love. watch two hours of that. So imagine it drawn out scene by scene to force you to pick up your freaking phone. <laughs> <laughs> Kent and I worked on it for years. Amen. So it's the New Year's Eve streamathon. It's because I was working on that movie. <sighs> yeah. So, all right. So the, well, actually, Tay, Tay, why don't you explain what the movie's about? Just a basic, uh, give us a basic <laughs> little uh, three or four sentence synopsis of it. I'm gonna because we're doing a watch party right after this too. I'm going to be very light in my explanation. Okay. But, okay. Um, I play Sydney, who is one of the characters' older sisters, the two main characters. It is the story of a brother and sister who grew up together. And then when they were, I don't know the exact age, like maybe 9, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there, their parents get divorced and they get separated. And this is them coming back together as teenagers now. Mm. And some quirky and interesting things occur. And while I will say that this movie is about incest, <laughs> it, it really is very heartwarming and it is wickedly funny. And um, it makes such fun light. It's so clever. And the characters are insanely amazing about how all of this plays out. And I had such a joy getting to play Sydney and working on this. I think it's hilarious. It is definitely rated R. And it is not conscious enlightenment, but it is so funny. Okay, and as you as you mentioned, we are going to have a watch party for this movie in our post show, which takes place at bit.ly slash RMP Discord. If you're not already a member of our Discord, go ahead and jump in there and yep. uh, and be part of the part of the party in there. Um, yes, and for anyone that's and isn't doing this watch party with us there are so many ways to watch it online and i cannot say it enough this absolutely is diamond club sense of humor <laughs> i have full confidence showing this to you guys and watching it with you it is cringe and weird and uncomfortable and the the characters they thought of and the weird lines it's like watching the best cult movie and it has really developed an awesome cult following and it's won a bunch of awards but also Amazon took it down because they were like, this content isn't allowed, oh. which is a big compliment. Oh, <laughs> wow. I didn't yeah. I didn't know about that. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, right. you, you weren't planning on renting it from uh, from Amazon for the watch party, were you? <laughs> no, I actually I went through uh, the Alamo Draft House to, to rent it. So uh, yeah. shouldn't have any problems it's with that. For any nerds who are looking for something fun to watch, you've like maxed out your Netflix, like this is it. You will mm. not leave disappointed, I promise. Whether you love it or hate it, like there's nothing boring about this film. It goes there. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about the, the filming process. Uh, was this a was this something that you specifically auditioned for or was this a like a uh, like a film troupe that uh, that you were associated with that was making it? So my audition for this is hilarious. I, uh, you, of course, Diamond Club's helped me because Diamond Club's helped to create Tay Allen. So I get a Facebook message from these two Austin comedians. Really quick backtrack. Most of you have seen my stand up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I had like this like year after Mass Text where I went and did a lot of stand up comedy and sketch comedy. So I had done like stand up four times 
all of which except one I thought were awful. And I, I think the guy was only asking me to come back because he had a crush on me. Like, mm. no one laughed. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. It was really bad. <sighs> um, but I did those. And somehow, so the Austin comedy scene is really, like, small and connected. I would not call it clicky, but um, somehow these people knew about me. And I get this <laughs> message, and they kind of worked. They were, like, really big, high-end troop members at a different comedy club. But I had done, like, some weird South By show at one of them once. Like, it mm. was the variety hour for any, <laughs> like, uber-obsessed fans. So I had done that at their comedy show. So somehow they saw me do something. And um, they messaged me, and they're like, hey, we want you to audition for this movie. I am with my father <laughs> driving up to Dallas. He bought us like a father daughter. Let's go watch the USC game. We got tickets. This is our bonding trip. Mm. It's a three hour drive. We're like an hour in and they're like, Hey, we want to audition you right now. And I'm like, Hey, I'm in the car with my dad. Can we FaceTime and do this? And they're like, yeah. Oh my. When y'all see this movie and you see the lines that my character has to say, <sighs> and it's B. again, this movie is definitely rated R. I'm sitting with my dad next to me. Just, like, cussing up a storm, acting so bitchy, just like, oh, my God, you C-word, what are you wearing? <laughs> like, just, like, very, and I'm in my little USC hoodie, and I'm like, hey, guys, here's my dad. <laughs> so, so I to this, like, super R-rated audition, and uh, at the end, he was like, good job, that was great. So props to Stacy, which is my dad's name. He's so sweet. Nice. Oh, now, my has... Has he seen the movie? He did. Him and my mom came to the premiere. They were very uncomfortable. They left right away. <laughs> he kind of went like, hey, good job. <laughs> wow. And my mom was like, and just walked away. But my friends loved it. So again, uh, I think it's a positive sign also for Diamond Club that my parents were pretty much speechless upon leaving. <laughs> Another good sign. That you guys will enjoy it. <laughs> wow. I mean, if that's not an endorsement. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Um, I know there's that thing where it's like you want to go in with low expectations. And I know I'm hyping this up so much, but I truly feel like this is going to live up to every bit of hype. Like within five minutes, we're just going to be, are we all going to be typing and talking? Is that how it works? Um, it'll be a mixture of voice and uh, text chat. Okay, cool. Yeah. Y'all are going to yep. go wild. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. I cannot wait to, to see this thing. Um, so at least one um, member of the cast has gone on to do some really high profile, exciting things. Uh, one of your co-stars is actually a current cast member and writer of Saturday Night Live. Uh, what was, I forgot his name now. Uh, Andrew Dismux. That's right, Andrew. So um, what, was the, what was your experience like working with, with him was he as is he as funny in real life as he is on SNL sure so what I'll say about this movie is I want to give them so much credit and like shout out to the production team because they made a totally movie theater ready quality movie on a shoestring mm. budget and I start with that like they did a kickstart and stuff, but I mean like everyone was hustling so Andrew was one of the leads they were doing like 16 hour shoot days every day mm -hmm. um so a lot of my interaction with him was his, him being tired, which is totally fine. Like, he would come off set and be tired. But I've seen him and Allie, who's his girlfriend, and they are amazing together. She's also an Austin comedian, and he was super nice to me. I did play his bitchy sister, so, you know, <laughs> uh, on camera, not a lot of love shared there. But everyone in this cast, and I'll keep answering questions and talking about it, was super cool. I was definitely the outlier. Like, they've all been doing comedy together for years. And I had to do some comedy in Austin a couple of years. And like, obviously I put in my work with the YouTube channel, but I wasn't just like them where they'd all known each other forever. Um, mm. And I thought it was really cool that they invited me in and that they auditioned me and that they cast me because I wasn't just a friend. And to me, it showed like, this isn't tooting my own horn. And it really is a compliment to them that like, they really wanted the best people for the part. And everyone in this movie is perfectly cast. Like, 
And that was the energy on set. I was looking around at these people and we're all in these weird, awkward, like 90s-esque costumes, but it's also sort of modern day. Like the world building around this movie is super <laughs> cool. And uh, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. Like brilliant is the word I use to describe it because everyone is just right on. So I don't know how they found me and they were so <laughs> sweet. And I had been like hated by the Austin community. Like, like there were a bunch of guys that like took my face and put dicks on it i've told you guys that story before oh so the fact gosh. that like, they just embraced me and were so cool and we're like yeah that's awesome like david the director is the sweetest guy everything you do he's like yeah yeah that's great that's, that's really cool <laughs> um, andrew, was, andrew was a sweetheart um he has a very like droll sort of like very uh stoic kind of person like he has a very deep voice oh. so he's just kind of like we'll walk by and he'll just be like Hello. Like, I can't even do it. I'm like, it's a but yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, now, Christina Parrish is not only the female lead, but she also wrote this movie. Yes. So I've always, I've always wondered, like, what that's like if you're, if you're going to be in a movie, but you're also the writer. Like, did, did, did she have a problem with, like, the way that people were saying her lines or um, mm-hmm. did she, like, embrace ad lib or how was, um, how was that, I guess, working with, with a, a dual role uh, lead actress and the writer at the same time. Sure. They were so open and they really trusted the comedians that they hired. Like everyone in this is like the upper echelon of Austin comedians. And I like squeaked mm. in cause I was like upper echelon YouTube. So like, <laughs> again, not in a pretentious way, but like everyone was mm. really talented and really good at what they did and what that made And she would say it like sometimes she would just sort of sit back because she was so tired. I mean, she was like running this and she's almost in every scene and she would just watch it and she'd just be like, oh, yeah, that just came to life. Like (laughs) she's brilliant because the script is really clever and weird and really funny. But we had so much freedom to do it how we wanted to do. And like I've been trying to remember the process doing this like. I have to be honest, there were some scenes where like I had read them and I thought they were supposed to be one way and I showed up and I'm like, oh, this is what this scene is. And I kind of like didn't, I wasn't very prepared, but um, (laughs) I knew the lines, but I was like, oh, I didn't, I like totally misread this. Um, (laughs) But the direction was so great and it was just very, it was professional, but very relaxed. And so like I have a scene with Christina, I don't want to give anything away, but it's really awkward. It's just me and her alone and like our characters do not like each other. And I think I made up half of it and like my reactions and stuff because like I didn't really understand it. And uh, when I watched it back, I was like, oh, they figured that out somehow. So I think it's a testament to her writing that like we could be so quirky and clever and that it still works. Like there wasn't only one way to do the scene. Um, and she was really hands off. Like she wrote it and then she let it be. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And just kind of handed it, it over to. encouraged improv too. Which oh, is okay. like, I think now, the best comedies have that. Did, did she direct it as well? No. no. So David Howe directed it. And he and her have just been like friends for years. They work with the same comedy club. I think David has like one cameo. I don't even know if he says the line. He has like his M. Night Shyamalan moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would have been way too much. Because when you guys see this, I mean, we had a hundred person set multiple multiple locations lighting crews like i've been on some i've been on like an abc family budget type of thing (laughs) and this was just as good and i don't know how they did it but i'm so proud of them they did yeah um so yeah you said that that uh david and um uh crap hang on Christina? christina yeah david and christina have been friends for a long time they're um uh, working relationship, I guess, the way that they interact on set, does that really shine through that, like their friendship? Or if you were brand new and didn't know them, you wouldn't realize that they were, they were pals. They were so comfortable with each other and all of, because these people were friends, they were all so comfortable with each other. Mm. And there's sort of a relaxed tone to the movie. Like it's like incredibly awkward meets relaxed. <laughs> and I think that's what really makes this movie work. Cause if it was just awkward and uncomfortable the whole time, you'd be so like, like it wouldn't be enjoyable, but this movie you can totally like have a beer, or eat some popcorn. Like <laughs> it's very like you're in it, you're vibing. There's a lot of fun moments. And 
that is the energy that they brought. I mean, Christina was so tired. And at one point, I think she looked at me and she was like, I haven't slept in three days or something because they had only a certain window to shoot one location. Mm. Um, one thing I know Christina did say, and she said this in some interviews, because this thing went to the Florida Film Festival. It was shortlisted for Sundance. The thing's been everywhere. Um, she said that uh, she didn't know Andrew super well, and they are the two leads, but she'd seen him around. And one thing that she loved is coming to set. She, she read him in an audition, but they didn't have a ton of prep time. He just like went in a hundred percent and was so ready to go, even though he was more of a comedian than an actor. Mm. And that's what everyone did. So like my time on set and I have, I mean, I'm a supporting character. I, I don't know how many scenes, but like I'm definitely in this movie, but I was not on set very much. Cause in two or three takes, we would just get it because mm. everyone mm. was ready and relaxed and really funny. Nice. Yeah. That sounds like a good way to, to make a movie. How long did it take? Like from, um, um, uh, opening day, I guess, or first day of shooting, I guess, to to wrap. How how long Ooh. was that? Was that a, a couple of months or? Again, I want to give them so much credit. I'm probably getting this wrong, um, but I think it was something like the whole thing happened in like 20 days. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But yeah. that's why they were so tired is because they just, I think they had all the equipment, they had all mm -hmm. these cast members, and they just wanted to get it done mm -hmm. in a certain amount. And I also want to give them credit. I don't remember because it's been a couple of years, but like I know that my role was paid or at least like deferred upon profits. Like this wasn't just like a freebie. They were really professional. Yeah, right on. Um, yeah, so anybody that's watching live, if you want to watch the movie with us, please join our Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. That's where we're gonna where we're gonna do the watch party. <laughs> also, y'all are gonna see a side of me you have never <laughs> seen. I am so different in this movie than <laughs> I am in real life on this show. Like you're gonna, you're enough of it. You're gonna know where I when it's my part. But you're just gonna be like, what? <laughs> and I'm excited for you guys to see that. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's that's Ask that's me. so cool. All right. Um, all right. Before we uh, start wrapping this up, did you have anything else? Like any. Um, any gems that you wanted to share about the movie before we watch it? Well, I have so many gems around me. Um, <laughs> man, it's just so, I just don't want to give, oh, oh my gosh. My ex-boyfriend is in this movie. He doesn't speak, he's just an extra. But it is going to be so awkward seeing it. Like that relationship ended so badly and mm. we were such a bad pair and he's playing a Christian protester in it. So whenever that moment comes around. Oh, geez. Um, yeah, we can all have a moment there because I'm going to have to see his face holding like a God loves you sign or something. <laughs> okay, so that so th that's kind of your brand, right? The Ock brand? Yes. Uh, so, so we're going to have an Ock moment. Taylor's yeah. failed relationship. <laughs> oh, that's that's yeah. amazing. Um, okay, so yeah. other other than in Call Me Brother, where else can people find you around the internet or anywhere else? Ooh, um, they can find me. Gosh, what are my socials even anymore? Um, <laughs> B. Tay Allen is always good on everything. Mm -hmm. um, I am doing like some cool meditation-y kind of stuff that I'm going to be popping out, but I'm also wanting to do more fun stuff too. This is very vague. I'm finding myself as always on these calls. Um, but I'm definitely going to be making more content. I got a fancy camera so for Christmas, so that's going to be really fun. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. But this is the webcam you guys got me, and I have used it so much. Nice. Oh, that's good. Yes. It's good. So sweet. So it's kind. Good to know that I, that's going to be I, uh, I actually just ordered a new webcam, and it should be arriving tomorrow. So my my video will uh, probably significantly improve, which will take the the mark of this podcast on the video side at least two <laughs> notches down. So you're gonna be able to see me more clearly. Right, right. Oh no, I don't know if I'm looking forward to that or not. Um, it was, well, I want to say thank you to Tinvec for saying yes, more content, and for all of you. I mean, again, the people listening to this, but like anyone who may listen to this later who's been a tater. You guys have been requesting more content so much. It means so much to me. And I just want you to know this movie is going to fill you. Like you are going to leave satisfied <laughs> that you got 
some tay from this. So get ready. Yumminess is occurring. <laughs> that is awesome. She says this movie is about to fill the emptiness. Ah, oh, well done, sir. Perfect. Perfect, well darling. <laughs> Where are you at on social media, Amos? Uh, you can find me at find all the things. I'm gonna. I, I promise I'll update it tomorrow. Uh, AnthonyLemos.com. New pictures coming up tomorrow. New blog posts coming up tomorrow. And of course, links to all my socials. AnthonyLemos.com. I keep looking Ooh. at the wrong camera <laughs> down here. It's, That's great. Um, we all do what we can do in these times. So I, I need one of those little red light markers that tells me which one right. to do. Yeah, no doubt. Coronavirus <laughs> made you look at the wrong camera. It's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> so I am at RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Um, you can find uh, everything that the show uh, is doing either on Twitter at Ritual Misery or head over to RitualMisery.com. Uh, once again, we want you to join us in the Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Uh, Tay, did you have something uh something else to add? yes i have something real quick mm -hmm. so i have been playing the game quartz on tabletopia and if anyone wants to play that with me message me on my facebook page tay allen or email tay allen at hotmail.com a-l-l-y-n and we can have a play date very cool yes that is awesome that'd be really fun hell yeah um Let's see, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, of course. We want to thank Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use his music, uh, us and the rest of the internet. Uh, thanks for listening. For Tay, for Amos, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Love you guys. Are, are we still quiet on set? <laughs> Apparently so. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed is, this is he going to throw up the T every time I make a sound? All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's... <laughs> I respected the T. <tea. laughs>